At UCSD, we actually um, use Glyviri in a targeted manner to treat um, postprandial as well as fasting glucose values. So generally speaking, where we initiate patients on glyburide based on the patient's weight. If they weigh less than 200, I usually start glyburide 1.25 milligram. If they weigh greater than 200, then I start glyburide at 2.5 milligrams. As I stated above, I use it in a targeted manner to target their postprandial values. So generally speaking, I instruct the patient to take the glyburide about an hour before her meals. And again, we start anywhere from 1.25 to 2.5 milligrams. And then I increase it by 1.25 to 2.5 milligram increments to a max of 10 milligrams per segment per meal. I also um, instruct the patient to take glyburide after 10 p.m. to target her fasting glucose values. Now, this is different from the CDAP website. They actually recommend um, the Langer uh, method of dosing glyburide, which is BID. Now, with glyburide, it's important to make changes every four days. You need to allow for a steady state of the medication. And generally speaking, as we uh, reviewed earlier, if I reach a maximum dose of 10 milligrams per segment or a total dose of 15 to 20 milligrams per day, then I start adding insulin to control their blood glucose if needed. Um, again, we add insulin if more than 30% of their blood glucose are above the target. Um, before I move on to side effects, the failure rate of glyburide is approximately um, 20%. So about 20% of our patients will need to be on insulin in addition to their glyburide to achieve um, glucose targets. Hypoglycemia is a risk factor that can occur with the use of glyburide. It occurs about in 11 to 38 percent of type 2 diabetes patients. In general, I see it in about 20 percent of our patients with, who are pregnant. And it's obviously dose dependent. The higher the dose, the higher the risk of hypoglycemia. And it can be seen in um, older patients as well. There's other rare side effects, for example, nausea, epigastric fullness, heartburn, and allergic skin reactions. Now moving on to other um, oral hypoglycemics, the second one that we use in pregnancy is metformin, which is a bigonide, which is um, mainly its use um, to target hypoglycemia is to increase muscle uptake of glucose. Metformin peaks within four hours of ingestion, and um, the plasma half-life is about two to five hours. It's primarily cleared by the kidney. And there are some rare side effects that are important to note, which is lactic acidosis. So in our patients with metformin, I'm very um, cautious in instructing them that if they are to undergo a CT for any reason, which um, uses CT contrast, IV contrast, that there can be a risk of lactic acidosis, particularly if they already have underlying renal insufficiency. So make sure to always advise your patients with regards to this when they are metformin. And also, it can cause GI upset. So I tend to um, initiate treatment with a meal, either at breakfast or at bedtime at dinner. The dose of insulin um, outside of pregnancy can be anywhere from 500 to 850 milligram increments for a maximum of 3,000 milligrams per day. Placental studies show um, that it does cross the placenta However, we have very good data about safety use in the first trimester. As you recall, um, metformin has been used by patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome to induce ovulation. And um, good studies of its use in the first trimester have shown that there is no increased risk of congenital anomalies or birth defects or um, adverse neonatal outcomes with the use of metformin in the first trimester. So if our patients have pregestational diabetes and come to pregnancy on metformin, I generally don't stop it. And I like to instruct our patients preconception that they should not stop the metformin. Glyburide, on the other hand, I do counsel them to stop it in the first trimester, as again, safety has not been proven with the use of glyburide in the first trimester. So the trial, um, which was performed by Rowan et al., randomized patients with gestational diabetes to metformin versus insulin for the treatment of GDM. And what they found, again, was there was no difference in glycemic control between patients treated with metformin and insulin. 
And there were also no differences in the rates of macrosomia or neonatal hypoglycemia. However, the failure rate um, for patients treated with metformin was 46%. In other words, 46% of patients needed to be started on insulin um, as they did not meet glucose control targets. Again, this is in comparison to 20% in glibrary treated patients. If you look closely at their outcomes, however, you do see that there's a lower rate of hypoglycemia in patients treated with metformin as compared to those with insulin. This is actually very important because um, you may have encountered this in patients with type 2 diabetes or gestational diabetes patients who have undergone uh, gastric bypass. They tend to be prone to hypoglycemia between meals. So metformin is a good adjunct um, treatment as it tends to not cause hypoglycemia in these patients. Glibra tends to cause hypoglycemia in these patients. So I tend to utilize metformin in these patients more often than not. One interesting finding that they found in this trial was that metformin was associated with a higher rate of preterm birth of about 12% versus 8% in the insulin treated group. And if you break that down further into spontaneous preterm birth, it was also higher in the metformin treated group. Interestingly enough, this finding has not been demonstrated again in subsequent studies. Again, Dr. Rowan has published a lot of trials on metformin and she has not found this um, association again. And we do not know what you know, the biologic possibility of this finding is, but still I always do mention this to our patients. So in summary, glyburide and metformin appear to be effective in the treatment of GDM. However, optimal dosing at least for glyburide is still um, in question. And we do ha still have some questions regarding um, neonatal metabolic effects. I think an, a large randomized control trial needs to be performed in order to examine these neonatal outcomes, but it requires collaboration between um, multiple centers. And this is uh, the end of my talk. I want to thank you all for your